In the previous lecture, we discussed the Bohr model. Now, let's actually look at the following example that deals with that concept. So, the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom is shown in the following diagram. Now, each one of these orbits represents a discrete quantity of energy. For example, if the electron is found in the orbit given by n equals 1, where n is the principal quantum number, that electron has a a quantity of energy given by negative 13.6 electron volts. The same thing holds for n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, and n equals 5. So basically, whenever an electron moves from a lower orbit to a higher orbit, energy must be inputted into that electron, work must be done against electric forces that pull the electron to the proton found in the nucleus. On the other hand, when an electron moves from a higher orbit to a lower orbit, energy is released from that electron in the form of a photon. So, let's begin with part A. In part A, we want to calculate the wavelength of the photon that is required to bring an electron from the ground state n equals 1 to a principal quantum number of n equals 5. So we essentially want to take a photon, we want to collide the photon with that electron so that it absorbs all that energy and jumps from n equals 1 to n equals 5. So basically, the quantity of energy that that photon has, E photon, is equal to the change in electric potential energy of that electron given by change in U electron. And that is given by taking our E5 and subtracting E1, where E5 is the quantity of energy the electron has at the fifth principal quantum number, and E1 is the quantity of energy energy the electron has when it is at the ground state n equals 1. So negative 0.54 electron volts minus negative 13.6 electron volts and that gives us positive 13.06 uh, electron volts. So this is how much energy that electron has to gain to go from n equals 1 to n equals 5 and that's how much energy that photon has to have. So now let's convert from electron volts to joules because when we apply this equation we have to use joules. So we know that 1.602 times 10 to negative 19 joules are found in one electron volt. So we multiply 13.06 electron volts by this, the electron volts will cancel and we're left with 2.09 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Now we apply this equation. So the energy our photon has, E, is equal to H multiplied by F, where F is the frequency. Now, we don't actually want to find the frequency, we want to find the wavelength. So remember, the speed of light, C, is equal to frequency multiplied by wavelength. So using that equation, we can replace the frequency with C divided by lambda, the wavelength. Length. So now let's take this equation and rearrange it and solve for the wavelength. The wavelength of that particular photon is equal to H multiplied by C divided by E, where H is Planck's constant, C is the speed of light, and E is the energy of that photon in joules that we calculated in this section. So H, Planck's constant, is 6.626 times 10 to negative 34 joules multiplied by second and the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We divide the product of these two numbers by the energy given in joules and we are left with about 950 nanometers is the wavelength of that particular photon. Now let's move on to part B. In part B calculate the wavelength of a photon released when the electron moves from the principal quantum number n equals 3 back down to the ground state n equals 1. So now our electron is moving from a higher 
energy level to a lower energy level and that implies energy is released in the form of a photon. So what is the wavelength of this photon? So we basically want to apply the same exact procedure except now our energy will be negative because the energy is released. Our electron loses energy and it becomes more stable, closer to that nucleus. So the energy of this particular photon is equal to the final energy minus the initial energy. So the final energy is the energy found when the electron is found in the ground state n equals 1 and that is equal to negative 13.6. Now E3 is given by negative 1.5 electron volts. So final minus initial negative 13.6 electron volts minus negative 1.5 electron volts and that gives us negative 12.1 electron volts. So, once again, the negative simply means that electron is being released or that photon is being released and the electron is losing energy. So, now we want to convert electron volts to joules. We follow this procedure. We multiply by 1.602 times 10 to negative 19 joules per electron volt. Electron volts will cancel and we're left with negative 1.94 times 10 to negative 18 joules is the energy found in that photon that is released. Now we apply this same equation. We rearrange and solve for lambda, our wavelength. So Planck's constant h multiplied by c, the speed of light, divided by e, the energy in joules. So now we're using positive because we're essentially taking the absolute value. So 1.94 times 10 to negative 18 joules. And this gives us a wavelength of about 102 nanometers. So this corresponds to the wavelength of that light of that photon that is released when the electron jumps from n equals 3 to n equals 1. So the electron loses potential energy.